When the Cleveland Cavaliers traded for sharpshooting wing Max Struess, many fans were excited about what he could add to the rotation, whether he comes off the bench or enters the starting lineup, and that perhaps more than anything else is Struess's ability to space the floor. After all, we're talking about a player who has knocked down over 41% of his three-point opportunities as recently as the 2021-22 season. And while he wasn't as efficient during the course of the 2022-23 campaign, Struess remains one of the game's better shooters out on the wing. So when the opportunity came for the Cavs to scoop him up via trade, they jumped at it. I mean, why wouldn't they? The trio of Isaac Okoro, Evan Mobley, and Jared Allen combined for a grand total of 85 triples, with Okoro leading the way with just 62. This team needed a boost to his perimeter presence badly, and Struess for his part recognized the clear need Cleveland had on the perimeter and seems eager to fill that void. But what exactly will that look like? Well, let's dig into it, shall we? Oftentimes, when people hear the word spacing, they tend to think of straight up three-point shooting. And while that is one way to look at it, it's not just one's ability to knock down a three-point shot. There is a lot to consider here. How much attention do defenses allocate towards a player when he is on the perimeter? How much gravity is he generating? How efficient is he with his looks? Can he use his gravity against opponents and attack their closeouts? Where is the player located on the perimeter? The corners at the top of the key? Can he shoot on the move? These are only a few variables to consider when discussing spacing. In the case of the Cavs, a team that was largely devoid of it outside of a handful of players, this was priority number one to address. Especially within the confines of the starting unit, where the Cavaliers feature the mostly non-shooting frontcourt pairing of Evan Mobley and Jared Allen. Two terrific players who impact the game at a high level on the defensive end, but don't scare any opponent from outside the painted area. And Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell are very good shooters in their own right, but they can only do so much when already facing constant double teams and being crashed on when driving towards the rim. This leaves us at the small forward position, where the Cavs deployed a number of different faces last season. Karis LeVert, Isaac Okoro, Jetty Osman, Dean Wade, Lamar Stevens, and even Mamadi Diakite all saw time there last season, each bringing something a little different to the table. The problem is that none of them sans maybe Levert could be depended on to space the floor. Enter Struess, who defenses will have to focus on primarily because of his ability to knock down the three ball from every angle and in a multitude of ways. After all, this is where the majority of his offensive production comes from. It's either an attempt at the rim or a three point shot. He only attempted 12 shots all season long from the mid range. First off, let's take a look at just where his shots came from. Struess attempted 563 total three-pointers, 82 came from the left corner of which he converted roughly 46%, 80 came from the right corner where he completed about 43.8%, and the remaining 401 attempts came from above the break where he knocked down just 30.9% of his shots. Struess was way more efficient from the corners overall, but the totality of this seems to indicate that he is truly comfortable taking these shots from anywhere outside the arc. This makes him someone that defenses have to account for. Defenders would not be able to leave him open to rotate to drivers due to his ability to knock down shots off of handoffs, pin downs, and flares. And that's big time for an offense that didn't have that luxury oftentimes last season. To further illustrate this point, let's take a look at the film. Here we have a possession in which the defense opts to leave Okoro completely undefended in the corner in an effort to crash down on Donovan Mitchell who quite literally has the attention of nearly the entire defense. They don't necessarily rotate and Okoro is left with a lot of space to operate in. The gamble pays off as he clanks the triple off the rim. Next, we see Okoro once again left unguarded while the defense focuses on the pick and roll action of Jetty Osman and Evan Mobley. They recognize this instantly and Mobley is forced to feed the ball to Jared Allen in the paint who is then picked up by a defender and who does Allen spot? Why a wide open Okoro on the perimeter. The gamble pays off again as he misses the shot. Lastly, we have another possession in which Okoro is left completely unguarded in the corner. The defense clearly does not respect his ability to knock down this type of shot as they don't even rotate or send a defender his way. Hell, Bradley Beal is so concerned about Robin Lopez that he completely abandons Okoro in the quarter and doubles Lopez and gives him a pretty good look. Clank. Now I know what it looks like but I'm not picking on Isaac Okoro because he isn't the only one who played small forward last year that this happened to. I'm just trying to paint you a picture of how valuable spacing is in today's league. 
Remember those factors I mentioned earlier? Many of them were at play in these specific instances. He wasn't generating much gravity as a shooter, nor was he in motion, and that can limit how effective your drivers can truly be. Now let's examine Max Struess. In this possession, Struess is near the top of the key and is never truly abandoned by the defense. In fact, both Ayo Donsumo and Alice Caruso, one of the game's better guard defenders, both make sure to keep tabs on his location on the court. Ayo picks up Duncan Robinson, and Caruso rotates to be able to contest the shot about as well as you can without fouling. The result? Swish. Next up, a possession in which Gabe Vincent sets a screen on Patrick Williams for Kyle Lowry and then immediately pops back out to the perimeter and receives the ball. This forces Struess' defender, Goran Dragic, to rotate over it leaving him open. Now at this point, they could have just given up on the plate, but Patrick Williams, who took a tumble already, got up with the quickness to contest Struess' shot. Guess what? It didn't matter. Swish. Next. We have a possession in which Gabe Vincent finds Struess in the left corner. He is momentarily open, but that quickly changes as former Trailblazers forward Justice Winslow attempts a closeout at near full sprint to try and contest the shot. Guess what? Struess don't care. He pulls the trigger and swishes the shot. No one, and I mean absolutely nobody was defending a coral that way last season. Now it's one thing to be efficient with your catch and shoot looks as Struess was, he knocked down over 36.1% of his catch and shoot triples, but another separating factor here is just how comfortable Struess appears to be when on the move, whether it be off screens or dribble handoffs. Notice how confident he is coming off of this screen while acting as the ball handler. Jordan Poole is attached to him at the hip here, yet Struess felt confident enough to hoist this attempt. A different type of look here as Bam Adebayo hits him with a dribble handoff, which results in a fairly uncontested triple, which he knocks down. He's pretty solid as a movement shooter and it completely shows. In this one, he sort of combines his catch and shoot ability with his willingness to move around the court as he brings the ball past half court and then proceeds to deal it to Jimmy Butler and takes off towards the left corner, but not before setting somewhat of a screen for Butler before doing so. It results in another make. The gravity that he plays with is consistently on display even on his misses. Notice how quick the defenders are to chase him. The simple threat of a three-point bomb being dropped on their head is enough to warrant defensive attention. Look how wide open the painted area is on these possessions. I cannot stress this enough, the Cavs would have killed for this type of perimeter spacing last year. Defenses wouldn't have been able to collapse down on the ball handlers as easily if they actually had to account for another shooter out there. Struess will bring that to the table. 1.7 of his triples attempted per game were considered tightly defended last year. So just how exactly will this translate to Cleveland? Well, he's a low usage player, finishing with a usage rate of 16.4% this season and rarely turns the ball over as a result. His 8.5% turnover percentage ranked within the 84th percentile. This leads me to believe that he could continue to be very effective in an off-ball role with the Cavs. And although people will point to the stylistic differences between the offense that he played in with the Heat versus the Cavs offense, I believe that lining up with some really good facilitators and Garland and Mitchell could do wonders for him. And if you're concerned in regards to his effectiveness is tied to the pace of play, just remember that while Cleveland plays with the slowest pace in basketball, Miami plays with the second slowest pace and he was still able to put up 7 triples per game. He could step in and almost immediately become the Cavs best shooter out on the wing. Hell, even in a down year, he still managed to make over 2.5 triples per game on those 7 attempts. He is a legitimate sharpshooter capable of stretching a defense out. That said, putting Struess into a box and limiting him to strictly perimeter shooting may not exactly be using him to the best of his abilities. An underrated area of his game is his work as a cutter. It's not something that he did very often, but he was efficient when he actually chose to do so. Struess ranked within the 96th percentile as a cutter this past season and completed 82.9% of his looks off of cuts to the basket. His 1.65 points per possession ranked 11th in the league among players with at least 50 games under their belt this year. This is something I think that could be used even more so with Cleveland considering the passers on the roster. It's also closely related to the amount of spacing that his presence generates. Something to keep an eye on will be the on-court bond Evan Mobley and Max Struess will make. In many of these clips that you have seen so far, Bam Adebayo was pretty damn good at finding a cutting Struess for a good look at the basket. 
This is something that I think Evan Mobley is perfectly capable of, whether it's at the top of the key or on the elbow. If Cavs head coach J.B. Bickerstaff is able to draw up some plays that get Struess on the move, defenses could be in for a rude awakening. While I don't consider Struess to be the caliber of shooter that Kyle Korver was in Cleveland, I could definitely see him having some success with similar actions on the court. Get him on the move. Set up some flare screens, DHOs, pin downs, or perhaps even some pick and roll sets. And even if that's not the case this season, we can at the very least rest assured that teams will no longer be able to ignore the small forward position whenever he's out there, even if he's just standing in the corners. The gravity that he generates will be pivotal on unlocking the Cavs offense this upcoming season. Book it. Go Cavs.